Hello everyone, welcome back. In this lecture, we will learn about hierarchical clustering. Earlier, we have learned about k means clustering. Hierarchical clustering is bit different from k means clustering. k means clustering is flat, whereas hierarchical clustering provides me a dendrogram. So, let me see the key features of hierarchical clustering. The first one is that hierarchical clustering is a agglomeratic algorithm or bottom up algorithm. What do I mean by that? In hierarchical clustering, what we are doing, we initially consider each data point as individual cluster and then we fuse these cluster, these data points to create new cluster and this is iterated. So, you are taking multiple component and they are fusing together to create new clusters. So, that is why it is called agglomerative. Secondly, that is where uh, the second point is key difference between k means clustering with k means clustering. A hierarchical clustering will give me a dendrogram, a visual representation just like this one that will show the relationship between clusters in terms of their dissimilarity or distances between data points and cluster. For example, in this case, it shows that 1 and 4 form 6, whereas 2 and 5 form the cluster 7 and 3 and a, 3 and 7, this one and this together form cluster 8. So, in this way, I get a dendrogram just like the phylogenetic tree that you may have seen to understand evolution of organism. The third important point for hierarchical clustering is that to perform hierarchical clustering, you do not need to specify the number of cluster in your data. If you remember, in k in clustering, at the very beginning of running the algorithm, I have to specify the value of k, the number of clusters. For example, you may consider k equal to 3, you may consider k equal to 5 or even 10. Now, the problem in k means clustering is that how do I know how many clusters are there in my data? So, that is what we discussed in our lecture in k means clustering that we perform the same uh, anal analysis using multiple different values of k and then choose the optimum one. But in hierarchical clustering, we have no such problem. We do not define or specify the number of clusters in the data a priori before we start the algorithm. So, let us start uh, uh, implementing the algorithm on a data and try to understand how hierarchical clustering works. So, I have cooked up a data just like a gene expression experiment. I have uh, two experiment, experiment 1 and experiment 2 and each of these data point is one gene maybe, maybe this is gene 3. Usually, I, if there will be hundreds and thousands of data points. Just for clarity, I have just kept uh, five data points and we will build uh, uh, a dendrogram using a hierarchical clustering uh, algorithm on this data. The first step as it is an agglomerative method is to consider that each data point is an independent cluster. So, how many data point I have? Five data point. That means, the number of cluster will be five all these are independent clusters. This is the first step. Next, what we do? We find the closest pair of clusters. What do I mean by that? So, I have five clusters. In this step, actually each cluster is nothing but uh, original data points. So, I have five duster, uh, da clusters and we take any pair of any two of them right, and find the distance between them. So, for example, you may take 4 and 3 and calculate the uh, distance there may be d 4 3. We have learned many distance measure earlier, Manhattan distance, Euclidean distance, Mohlanovic distance. You have to choose which distance measure you want to use depending upon the problem at hand. So, suppose we are using Euclidean distance which is most commonly used for uh, this type of analysis. So, we calculate the distance between uh, 4 and 3 we calculate distance between 4 and 1 and all the pair for example, D 2, uh, 2 and 5. So, all pair wise distance we measure and then we find out the minimum of those. So, you find the minimum of this that will give me the closest pair. right? So, we have to find the closest pair. So, if you look at this data 
visually it is apparent that 1 and 4 may be the closest one. So, d 1 4 may be the smallest distance. So, now I have to move to the third step. What is the third step? Third step says that combine these two clusters to create a new cluster. So, I have chosen the closest pair in this data 1 and 4 are, is the closest pair. So, I will fuse these together to create a new cluster and that is what I have shown in this diagram. So, I have fused 1 and 4 as my third step says to create a new cluster, cluster 6. Till now I have 5 data points, they are all independent clusters, so I had 5 clusters. Now I have created a new cluster, so this is the 6 cluster. Now what I have to do? I have to move to the fourth step where I will draw the dendrogram. So, to uh, explain the dendrogram, it is better if I uh, draw a horizontal line. Remember, in this horizontal line, we will always put the original data points. For example, in this case, my original data point is 1 and 4. So, this yellow dot representing 1 and 4 is on the, are on the horizontal line and then I connect them by two arms to represent that they have got fused to create 6. Just like a phylogenetic tree, for example, organism 1 and organism 4 are originating from my ancestor 6, something like that. So, I have two branches coming out of cluster 6 and they are joining to 1 and 4. Now, what should be a distance of this one, height of this branch? Okay, we use a convention. We scale this height as per the value of the pair, half of the pairwise distance. So, the pairwise distance between 1 and 4 is d 1 4, you half that divided by 2 and you scale that to scale the height of this branch, just like you scale uh, when you draw a map, right. So, you are scaling it. Now, what we have to do, we have done the uh, first step, we have created the first dendrogram, we have to build up on it. So, to build up on it, we have to repeat this process multiple times. So, let us repeat. The first repetition is for repetition of 2. Again, find the closest pair of clusters. Now, remember we have fused 1 and 4. So, 1 and 4 does not do not exist for us anymore. What we are left with? We are left with 6, cluster 6, cluster 3, cluster 2 and cluster 5. So, we have to calculate the pairwise distance between these 4 clusters. If you remember, 3, 5, 2 are itself clusters at the very beginning, right. So, they are still independent clusters. So, we have to take these 4 clusters, 6, 3, 2 and 5 and find the pairwise distance between them and find the closest pair the way we have done earlier. So, for example, in this diagram, if you visually observe, you will see possibly this pair, the distance d to 5 may be the least one. So, the closest pair is cluster 2 and cluster 5. So, what I will do? I will move to third step. I will combine these two clusters to create a new cluster just like we did earlier. So, now I will combine 2 and 5 to create a new cluster. That is what I have done here. So, I have got a new cluster 7. 2 and 5 now disappears. So, I have got a new cluster by combining cluster 2 and cluster 5 to create cluster 7. Now, I will add that to my dendrogram. So, let us see that. Again, just for clarity, let me draw this horizontal line and as I said earlier, all my original data point should be on this horizontal line. So, I have all those data points on the horizontal line and now this is 2 and 5. They have fused combined to give me the 7 cluster. So, this is 7 cluster. So, 7 is connected to 2 and 5 by 2 branches. What will be the height of these branches? Again, the height will be half of the distance between 2 and 5. So, d to 5 divided by 2. The way I have done for 1 and 4 when I was building for 6. So, that is how I have drawn the dendrogram or added the new cluster to the dendrogram.
So, remember I have to keep on uh, repeating this method. right? Now, before I repeat, you may be wondering that earlier what we have done, we have calculated distances between 1, 4, 3, 2 and 5, right? pairwise distances. But in this particular step, I have calculated distance between 6 and 3, distance between 6 and 2 and so on. Now, 6 itself is a cluster, it is not a data point. right? So, cluster 6 has multiple data points. So, this cluster is a set of objects. So, how do I measure distance between a cluster and a data point? I know how to measure distance between two data points. I know how to calculate that for Euclid using Euclidean distance measure. But how should I calculate distance between two clusters or one cluster and one data point? Because the cluster does not have one object, it may have multiple objects. That is a valid question and I will come back to that, how to do this. For the time being, you consider, we know that and that is what we have implemented here. For example, we uh, calculated distance between 6 and 3, 6 and 5 and so on. So, now let us repeat the whole algorithm again and proceed further. So, I have to repeat again. So, I have to repeat this whole thing uh, for 2, 3 and 4. So, now if I look into this, I can easily see that uh, 3 and 7. So, I have how many clusters we have now? I have cluster 3, cluster 6 and cluster 7. I have to calculate the pairwise distance between them because remember 2 and 5 does not exist anymore for me. Neither 1, 4 exists for me. So, I have cluster 3 which is the original data point cluster 6 and cluster 7 and I have to calculate the pairwise distance between these three clusters. And then I have to combine the closest pair. So, I will combine these two closest pair to create a new cluster and add that to the dendrogram. So, if you visually look at it, possibly 3 and 7, D 3 and 7 or D 7, 3 whatever you say is the closest one, maybe the minimum one. So, that means I have to fuse these two to create a new cluster and that is what I have shown in this slide. So, I have fused 3, cluster 3 and cluster 7 which itself made up of 2 and 5 to create a new cluster, cluster 8 and I have put that clustering on the dendrogram. Just to explain, let me draw the horizontal line, 3 has been placed on this horizontal line and 3 has fused with 7 to create a new cluster 8. So, from 8, 2 branches, 2 arms goes to a 3 and 7. Again, what will be the scaled height of these uh, branches, 2 arms? That will be equal to the half of the distance between cluster 7 and cluster 3. So, this iteration is kept on doing, we will keep on doing that and then eventually in the next step I get all data points are now in this new cluster, cluster 9 and I add that to the dendrogram. So, I am done because all data points are now are part of this cluster 9. There is no other cluster left. I am left with only one cluster. So, there is nothing more to fuse. So, my algorithm will stop here. What I have got? I have got this dendrogram which shows hierarchical relationship between my data point and the clusters. Usually, you will report this one. We do not report this one in our reports and uh, articles because this one I have drawn just to explain this dendrogram you will report. So, what this dendrogram says? With leaves, the leaves of this dendrogram, these are the leaves, right? leaves of the dendrogram are original data. right? So, I have 5 leaves, 5 data points and the nodes, internal nodes are the clusters. And this whole diagram which is scaled uh, with scaled arm, each of these arm represent the distance or dissimilarity between different points, data points and clusters. So, looking at this cluster, uh, this diagram, I can easily understand which cluster is close to or dissimilar to which cluster. Now, let me move to that unanswered question. In this algorithm, I am measuring distances between clusters. In one of our previous lecture, 
we have learned distances between data point. How should I measure now the distances between clusters? There are many methods, I will discuss few of them. Let me explain what we have to do here. So, for in our problem, we had to measure the distance between 6 and 7 and 3. Right? So, how do I measure distance between 6 and 7 when 6 and 7 has two elements uh, both? So, that is our problem and I will discuss some of the distance measure for clusters. As a technical term, usually the distance be, me, between clusters is usually called the linkage. So, there are many types of linkages usually used in data analysis. I will discuss four of them. The first one is single linkage. What are you doing in this case? Just look at this diagram. I have two clusters, cluster 1 and cluster 2, C1 and C2. Cluster 1 has uh, 5 objects or 5 elements whereas, this one has uh, 4 objects or 4, sorry, this one has uh, 5, this one has 6, right? Yes. <coughs> so, now, what I have to do, the first step I have to do is to calculate the all pairwise distance between elements of these two clusters. What do I mean by that? In cluster 1, I have 6 objects, whereas in cluster uh, 2, I have 5 objects. So, take one object from cluster 1 and pair it with another object of cluster 2. In this way, you create all possible pairs of objects between cluster 1 and cluster 2 and calculate their distances. Now, these objects are your original data points, right? So, now you can use those distance measure that we have learned earlier, for example, Euclidean distance or Molonovitch distance or correlation distance, whatever you want to use. You can use that those definition, those metrics to calculate the distance between any two data point pair that you have picked up from these two clusters. So, you make a list, right? All the pairs from C1 and C2 and their distances and then you pick the minimum distance, minimum of this pairwise distance and that distance you will consider as the distance between these two clusters. For example, in this case, I have calculated all possible pairwise distances and you, I find that this and this forms a pair and their distance is the minimum distance. So, this distance will be considered as the distance between cluster 1 and cluster 2 and that will be called single linkage. Now, let me move to the second option that you have. That is called complete linkage. The procedure is almost same. You again create all the pairs taking one object from C1, cluster 1 and another object from cluster 2. So, you make a uh, pairwise combination and then you calculate distance between these pairs. right? So, you calculate distance between uh, this one and this one, this one, this one, so on. So, you again make a list. In single linkage, you have taken the least value, the pair which are closest to each other. Now, in case of complete linkage, you choose the maximum of those pairwise distances. So, you calculate the maximum of those pairwise distances and that distance will be considered as the distance between my clusters and that will be called complete linkage. Look at the diagram. In this case, this and this forms a pair and the distance between these two objects is the largest one in all these pairwise distances in this particular example. So, this distance is now the complete linkage or the distance between these two clusters, cluster 1 and cluster 2. Let us look into the third option that is called average linkage. And as the name suggests, essentially we will do averaging of pairwise distance. So, again you calculate all the pairwise distances between by taking one object from C1 and C2. So, you make all the pairwise combination and calculate the distance between all these objects from C1 and C2. And then, you take the average of those pairwise distances and that distance you will consider as the distance between clusters. So, in this case, what I have to do? I have to calculate distance between these, distance between these, distance between this one, distance between this one, all pairwise distances and then I will make a list table and take the arithmetic mean of that. And suppose that arithmetic mean is this line, that arrowhead, double arrowheaded line I have shown. 
So, that distance is the average linkage or average distance between cluster 1 and cluster 2. The last distance measure is bit different from the other, other three that we I discussed till now. That is called centroid or centroid linkage. What you are doing here? You do not calculate any pair wise distance. What you do? You take cluster 1, the data of that and calculate the centroid of that. That means, the mean position, center of that uh, cluster. So, suppose that is this pink star. You do the same thing for cluster 2. So, that is that pink, pink star. Now, you calculate the distance between these two centroids and that distance you consider as the distance between cluster 1 and cluster 2. That will be called centroid distance or centroid link. So, you can choose any of these four to implement your hierarchical uh, algorithm for clustering. Now, we have to remember that this choice of linkage or choice of distance between cluster will affect the final outcome of our clustering algorithm. And I have taken a di diagram from a book that shows it very nicely. So, let me uh, change the color of my pen. So, this is average linkage they have used on a data set. On the same data set, they have used the complete linkage and also used the single, single linkage measure to draw the dendrogram, the hierarchical clustering. They perform hierarchical clustering. And you can easily see that these three diagrams, three, these three dendrograms are different. So, that means, your choice of linkage that you use in your algorithm will affect the final outcome of your hierarchical clustering. And if you look at it, single linkage has completely unbalanced dendrogram. What we have got here is sometimes called chaining. This happens because you remember that in single linkage what we are doing? We are calculating the pairwise distances between objects in cluster 1 and cluster 2 and taking the shortest one. Now, that means, if I have quite heterogeneous two, uh, two clusters which are quite far, but one of the data points are close to each other, then these two clusters will come together. They will belong to the same cluster. So, in this way, you get this type of chaining, which, is, which, are, uh, which essentially is skew the whole dendrogram. So, usually that is why a single linkage measure is not used mostly in biology. In most of the time, biologists use average linkage and sometimes complete linkage because they provides me a balanced dendrogram. That is all for this lecture to learn about hierarchical clustering. Let me jot down what we have learned in this. In this lecture, we have learned about uh, the algorithm, the basic steps involved in hierarchical clustering. We have to remember that hierarchical clustering is actually an agglomeratic method. Right? So, you take all data points at independent cluster and then you keep on fusing them to create a bigger cluster. The second important thing is that the hierarchical clustering gives me a dendrogram, a visual representation of data where the dendrogram shows which data point is close to which one, which cluster is close to which one. So, it shows a, it gives a visual representation of similarity and distances between clusters. And in this dendrogram, the leaves are the original data points and the nodes are the internal clusters. The third thing that we have learned is that we have learned about different distance measure between clusters. This is a bit different from distance measure of data points. So, we have learned about single linkage, complete linkage, average and centroid linkage. And as I mentioned, most of the time people use average linkage and complete linkages because they provide us a quite a balanced dendrogram. But the last, not the least, the most important thing as I have shown by one data set that linkage measure that you are using can actually create completely different outcome. So, you have to judiciously choose the linkage measure. At the same time, for any clustering algorithm, not just for hierarchical clustering, any clustering algorithm that you use, your distance measure for data points will also affect the final outcome. 
So, whenever you are performing hierarchical clustering or any other clustering, you have to be very careful about what distance measure you should use to calculate the similarity or dissimilarity between two objects or two data points. Euclidean distance is usually the most of the time the common choice, but there are many other distance measure we have discussed earlier and you have to judiciously choose them and you have because based on your understanding of the biology and the physical principle that which measure will give physically meaningful meaning of dissimilarity or similarity between two objects and you have to choose that. And specifically for hierarchical clustering again you have to judiciously choose the linkage measure. That is all for this lecture. See you in the next one. Till then happy learning.